I always start the pages from scratch, but I do not start the website from scratch. <laughs> Today I want to give you a little peek into how I actually start my custom website projects for my clients. <laughs> and if that's got you scratching your head thinking, what the hell is she talking about? Hang tight. We're going to actually jump into my Squarespace account and show you what that looks like. But before I dive in, if we haven't met, hi, my name is Caitlin and I run launch the damn thing. I am a website designer and Squarespace educator, and I love to talk about all things Squarespace along with all the processes and tech that I use to manage my business. <laughs> so now that we're good friends, let's hop on into my account. This is the template site that I always start with when I have a new client build. I do a lot of things on the back end before I ever get started on the actual paid designs. And I don't like repeating that work. I don't think you will either. I don't know why it took me so many years to figure this out, but it did. I finally realized that I can start with the blank template that I designed and have all the features that I love to use and always install already in it so that I can get started with the designs a lot quicker. <laughs> That's what this is. So if we start and go into the pages, you can see I already have blank shells ready for design work to get started for things like the about page, the services page, contact home, and even FAQs, although that one does already have two pieces of content in it because FAQ pages are pretty basic. I try to keep them simple. Now, all of these might be blank, but the time that I'm saving in creating a new page, giving it a name, giving it a slug, all of those pieces, those are already done for the main pages that I know I'm going to have on most websites. The other pages that I have in here are things like collection pages for all the different types of businesses that tend to need some sort of database or collection on the website whether they're using the blog collection for blogging, for episodes, or for a directory, testimonials, disclaimers, or even ads on their website, I can adapt and get started really quickly because those things are already in place, including the Square Websites plugin, Universal Filter, which I've already installed on this particular blog that will allow the client to give viewers the ability to sort, filter, and search through their content library. I also have a shop set up with some demo content. I leave these things in here, even though I delete them every time because it is actually helpful to see products in the shop to style them in site styles or with custom code. So I leave those elements in a lot of these collections. Those things are easier to delete because they have the handy little check boxes here. And when you start checking them, you can select all and move to a different collection or you can delete them in bulk together. So that's a really quick thing. And there's one of the reasons why I leave that there. Before I move on, fun fact, in the not linked section, Folders do not represent drop downs like they do in the main navigation area of your pages menu. So you can use folders to organize the loose pages and your not linked section and it doesn't tend to affect anything. One caveat to that is if you have the advanced maps, you will need to pull that collection out of a folder because it can mess with the ability for the advanced map block plugin to function. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're probably not using that plugin. <laughs> So moving on, the most important part is the under the hood type stuff that I always include in the settings. And these are all pages that are not designed for public consumption on a regular basis. They're not designed to show up in Google search. In fact, I've turned that off for all of these pages by going into the page settings, clicking on the SEO tab and turning on that toggle to hide this page in search results because it's not important for Google to populate the legal pages and policies in search results. So if you turn that off, you will not have your legal error 404 page, thank you page, or template style guide competing for rankings against your home services and your about pages. <laughs> So moving on, what's inside of these pages, the legal policies could be a blog, a portfolio collection, something to house sub pages, 
where each page has its own policy. And the reason for that is so that if you ever had to prove that IP address did in fact land and look at your page, it's a lot easier to do that if each policy is on its own page. Also, as a perk, with this kind of structure, each sub page has its own link. So if you ever needed to link directly to your privacy policy, you would be able to do that inside a collection page like blog slash whatever. It works the same way with either a blog collection working as a database for your policies or something like this, which is a portfolio collection, in which case the main hub is backslash legal and all the individual pages would be backslash legal backslash whatever you tell it that page slug is. If you provide the hub page, they come to a page like this with a list of links to all the titles of the sub pages or policies within this collection. When they click on any of these, they would have the policy in here and at the bottom, it would have automatic built-in pagination to go forward to the next policy or backwards and forwards as they move into the sub pages. So it's a good thing for that structure to already exist so that you don't have to create that if you want it. Side note here, as far as I'm aware, and I am not an attorney, so this is not legal advice, the privacy policy is the only one that's legally required in most places. No matter what your business is, you do have to have one of those. And my suggestion is to go to Creative Law Shop to grab that. It's the one where they update the policy like once a quarter, several times a year, and you don't have to pay for it again once you've already purchased it or to use something like Termageddon, which generates a policy for you and keeps it up to date and lets you know when there are new things to add based on changes in the laws. <laughs> Those are my two resources for varying budgets. I should note too that I do not provide the policies for my clients. They have to submit those to me, but the structure for where I organize them on the website already exists. The Error 404 page has a really important page websites will have broken links over time. It happens to the best of us, even the pros like myself. And when it happens, you don't want them to land on a page that is not useful for them to find the thing they were looking for. So please, for the love of all things holy, create a custom error 404 page. It can have things like a search block, buttons that link to specific areas of the site that you think people will most frequently be looking for, a summary block to pull in testimonials or recent content from the website, and even a form that could help them let you know what's actually broken. When you've got it designed and the page already exists, to set it as the website's display page for broken links, you actually go back into your main menu, go over to design, select 404 page, and then pick the new page that you just created from the list of pages that exist in this account. By default, it will be on the system default page, which is the not helpful version. All you have to do is pick the one that you created, save your changes, and you're good to go. The next one in the list is the Instagram bio link. That's what I'm calling it. This page is designed to give you a custom URL that goes on the end of your domain. So you can put that one link in your Instagram bio or your Pinterest bio or your LinkedIn bio or your Facebook bio or your YouTube bio, whatever it is, and give people one page that exists on your website that is styled like your brand that has ability to link and show automatically recent content on your website for free because you're already paying for your website, you might as well do this on your website. If you use an outside service or a third party like Linktree, you're paying potentially or having to go to a different place to update that stuff. If you want it to be branded perfectly to match the rest of your style, you have to usually pay for that. So skip the third party. <laughs> You're also sending traffic to them in between getting them from point A to point B, right? You don't want them to go from point A to point B to point C. The more clicks they have to click to get to the end result, the less likely they are to get to the end result. So skip all the hassle, skip the extra payment, and create this for yourself. And the good thing with Fluid Engine is now you can actually design the page to look great on mobile without any custom code. All I have done on this website is to establish in the code injection for this page only that I am going to hide both the header and the footer for this page. 
you can choose to hide the header only, or you can choose to hide the footer only, depending on what you prefer. On this particular version, I'm hiding both because I want it to feel like a standalone website in and of itself without actually having it be a standalone website. I have a space to put in the company logo because we're hiding header navigation, which has the logo in it. We have to reapply it, basically. I have room for several different links to your freebies page, to your services page, to your about page, to whatever, and a summary block that will pull in recent content, whether it's testimonials or blog posts or podcast episodes or whatever it is. If it exists on your website, you can pull it in through a summary block. At the bottom, there is also a block for adding your social media accounts. So if you want people to know where else your brand exists on the interwebs, you can do that with the social media block, and that'll give them the ability to go follow you in multiple places. So that's your Instagram bio link page. Next is your thank you page, and that's really simple. I always start with a blank because, again, really simple. Usually it's just a photograph some text, and maybe a button. (laughs) Usually it's being used for things like a redirect. So when someone fills out a form on your Squarespace site, the post submit section of that form can say, hey, go to this other page after they've pushed the submit button on the form. And this page can be the page they get redirected to. If you want to be able to use it for multiple purposes, then I would keep it really simple. Just say thank you and let that be the end of the story. Or you can create multiples of this for different reasons. You can have a thank you page for email marketing related preference updates. You can have a thank you page for submitting forms on your website. You can have a thank you page specifically for client inquiry forms, all of the things. But this is the starting point and I try to keep it really simple so that it can be multi-purpose. One of the last pages is the template style guide. I have a separate tutorial for this, so make sure you go check that out if you're confused. But basically, this is one very long page with a bunch of popular elements that I tend to use all the time so that I can see those groupings of elements in different color themes. And if you're new to Squarespace, you may or may not have access to color themes depending on the version of Squarespace you're using. It is unique to version 7.1 <laughs> and it does not exist on 7.0. And that's the reason why I built this because I needed a way to see what all of this stuff looks like on different color themes. So if you're totally confused or feeling kind of jelly <laughs> and you want to know what the heck I'm talking about, This is your color themes. On 7.0, you had alternating colors. If you wanted a different color, you had to upload your own image graphic of a color and use it as your background or use custom CSS. On version 7.1, you don't have to do that. You have 10 options that are built for you based on the color palette that you choose. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video about that too. So when I'm designing a new website, I want to see how the font looks in multiple different styles, title case, uppercase, bold, italic, regular, all the things. I want to see the spacing in paragraphs. I want to see how the link looks in a color, all of the different button styles. If I'm using classic editor, I want to see all of the different image layouts and what those buttons, titles, and paragraphs look like these overlay colors. I also want to see what the light box form looks like and style that and going back to the redirect for the thank you page, that is under the post submit area of your form settings in Squarespace. If you want to redirect, you choose that tab right here and put in the link and it can be your own website. I have a light box form with one of every possible field option in it because yes, I do style those with custom CSS and in order to do that, I need to see it to see what it looks like to make those decisions. I also have an inline form because the CSS applies to both and sometimes it'll react a little bit different in both places. So I need to be able to see that. I also have a product block for the shop and also a newsletter block. I've designed this section and I have duplicated it 10 times. (laughs) I have one of those for every color theme so that I can see how the colors will react to all of those elements. Those are the most popular, so that's what I want to see. That makes it really quick and easy for me to apply that brand styling 
and feel comfortable. It's going to work in all the areas of my site. So in creating the about page and the services page and whatever, I don't stumble across things all that often that I have to go back into site styles and adjust later. The last piece is the sandbox. The sandbox is unique to every client. Essentially, it is a page that is disabled because I want to give the client a space to be able to practice editing their website without feeling like they're going to screw anything up. I do not have the enabled page turned on so that they don't have to worry about anyone accidentally finding this stuff. This gives them a space where they can create new sections, use or reuse saved sections. Again, that's a feature for 7.1, not available on 7.0. If they want to practice using Fluid Engine, if they want to practice in Classic Editor, I can give them a Classic Editor section as well as a Fluid Engine section. And if you're confused on that, I have videos on Fluid Engine too. This is really custom to the client and how they are using their own website. So I tend to build it with that in mind. If they need a lot of practice with summary blocks, I'll give them practice with summary blocks. If they need a lot of practice with embedding a podcast player, I will give them an embed block. If they need practice with forms, I will give them a form accordion blocks, all the things, right? You just want to give them a space to play and feel comfortable that they're not going to screw up their website. The last area I'm going to touch briefly on because I'll cover that in a future video. This is a private resource area that I password protect for clients. I just started adding this to new client website builds because I wanted them to have quick and easy access to resources that will help them maintain their websites with confidence. Basically, that looks exactly like what you see here. It's a copy and paste thing right out of my ClickUp doc and it has links to all of the popular resources that I think they will need as they move forward with maintaining and editing their own website, including quick access to the help center and the support areas of Squarespace, learning a little bit more about accessibility, SEO resources, blogging, videos, all the things, right? The new page checklist is a big hit. <laughs> So that's a private page that I give clients. It is password protected on their sites so they can access it when they're not logged in as long as they know the password and the link to get there. The very last piece and the piece that's not applicable for everyone that designs websites because no, you don't need to know custom code in order to design on Squarespace. But for us that design for other people for a living, it can help. <laughs> So over the years, I've taught myself and took courses on how to write my own custom code. And so for that reason, I do have a fair bit of custom CSS on my websites, including variable fields so that I can apply custom colors that match the color palette in Squarespace to the code beneath it and only have one place to edit the code. I also have some breakpoints and other variables, custom scroll behaviors, and a place to install custom fonts. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Slightly editing the ser search page that's built into Squarespace, um, styling the comment box, styling the forms, styling the headers, editing the map customizations, and of course the cookies pop up. <laughs> So as you can see, that's a fair bit of code and that's just my starting point. So most of the websites that I do for clients has on average about one to 2000 lines of CSS in it, give or take, and usually has the Square Kicker plugin on top of it. If you're wondering how I manage that, by the way, because Squarespace by default gives people two week trials, or if you're a Circle member, you get a six month trial to do your new websites. Just duplicate this every six months. <laughs> You can ask a Squarespace support member to help you. They are always happy to do it. That way you always have a copy of this in your Squarespace account and it won't expire. You don't have to pay for a separate website. So that's a wrap on my client template. If you loved this video, make sure you like and subscribe so that I can keep delivering awesome content for you and make sure you click that bell because I will be having a separate video on client resources and you want to make sure you do not miss that. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video.